In this video, I'll be discussing convergent evolution and six examples I think are astonishing. All life that exists on our planet today can be traced back to a common ancestor that lived four billion years ago. Through hundreds of millions of years of divergent evolution, new species arose that were uniquely adapted to their environments. The term microevolution is used to describe evolutionary change over a relatively short period of time. Through mutations, gene flow, and natural selection, microevolution sculpts variation within a species. Over far greater periods of time, something called macroevolution can be observed. Macroevolution is the result of hundreds of thousands of years of microevolution within a species, resulting in a divergence of a gene pool into an entirely new species. Because all life as we know it derived from a common ancestor, a common trend in skeletal structure can be found in all existing species today. As you can see here in the arm bones of most mammals, the humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges are all present in each skeleton. Humans possess remnants of our ancient tails, the coccyx. Cetaceans possess useless fingers within their flippers because whales, 40 million years ago, evolved from a mammal that walked on land. We can see in modern whales today, their nostrils form a blowhole atop their heads, yet they still have two nostrils. We can see in the skeleton of the ancient whale, Basilosaurus, the nostrils were slightly closer to the snout. And in their distant land ancestors, Pachycetus, the nostrils were situated at the end of the snout, like most land mammals today. The same pygmy fingers can be found within the flippers of sea lions, Manatees have toenails. Elephants share all of our foot bones hidden deep inside their fatty stumps. The list goes on and on. This is all due to the fact that natural selection cannot go back to the drawing board and start from scratch. It must work with what it has, thus slowly shaping adaptations over the generations. There's a wonderful video by Richard Dawkins on the laryngeal nerve a brilliant case for sometimes the nonsensical way an anatomy can turn out after enduring adaptations. I'll leave a link in the description below. So we know that if one delved deep enough into the past, they would find that all life is related. However, species that have been separated for millions of years of genetic isolation often develop similar phenotypic characteristics due to their similar environments. And this brings us to convergent evolution, the process by which different species that are not monophyletic develop similar traits due to inhabiting similar environments. Number 1. Streamlining Many sea-dwelling creatures possess similar physical characteristics which help them survive in their similar environment. Sharks, dolphins, whales, and fish all possess a similar streamlined body Equipped for aquatic maneuvering, all these species have dorsal fins, which help them stabilize their bodies during swift motion and prevent them from sliding or tipping to either side. Despite their different evolutionary upbringings, all these species have developed similar characteristics from living in the same environment. Number 2. Echolocation Echolocation is a type of biological sonar that allows for animals to sense their surroundings by emitting calls into their environments and listening for the echo that returns. By echolocating, an animal can tell how far an object is which is useful for hunting and navigation. This unique trait has sprung up on many occasions in evolution. Toothed whales and dolphins, bats and shrews, and even some humans are capable of echolocating. Number 3. Ankylosaurus and Glyptodont The Glyptodont was an ancient armored armadillo of massive proportions that lived millions of years ago. Becoming extinct during the last ice age about 12,000 years ago, they would have coincided with modern humans at the time, which is pretty awesome. Rewind the archaeological clock 200 million years, and you would find Ankylosaurus, the herbivorous armored giant of the Jurassic, 
Both Glyptodont and Ankylosaurus possessed bony structures at the end of their tails. Both of these animals possessed eerily similar traits, which they used to protect themselves against the colossal predators of the time. Number 4. Thylacine and Wolves The thylacine was a large carnivorous marsupial that lived in Tasmania, Australia, and New Guinea. It became extinct with the last known member of its species dying in captivity in 1936. Thylacines had been on the decline in Australia for the past 2,000 years, and when Europeans arrived on the scene with feral dogs and introduced species of plants, the demise of the thylacine was brief. The ancestors of the thylacine would have been small marsupials, yet their skulls look almost identical to that of wolves. Wolves are thought to have evolved from the ancient carnivorous mammal, Meocide. Both would have developed similar physical features from hunting similar prey, which would have most likely been small mammals and birds. And my personal favorite, number 5, beaks. Beaks have appeared in cephalopods, insects, birds, fish, mammals, and turtles, all independently from one another. In most animals, beaks consist of two bony projections which protrude from the upper and lower mandibles. Number 6. Spindle Neurons Spindle neurons are believed to permit quick communication between regions of a large brain, such as that of hominids. In humans, spindle neurons are found in the anterior cingulate cortex, as well as the insular cortex. These regions are both associated with emotional development as well as decision making, and are both thought to play a key role in consciousness. Spindle neurons were also discovered in the brains of cetaceans, such as sperm whales, orca whales, humpback whales, bottlenose dolphins, beluga whales, and fin whales. They've also been discovered in both African and Asian elephants, and even small amounts of spindle neurons have also been found in macaque monkeys, and interestingly enough, raccoons. It may just be so that the adaptation of spindle neurons is inevitable in large brain mammals, allowing for swift information transference across such an immense brain. So there you go. Six examples of convergent evolution. If there's anything that all this really makes me think about, it's what life on other planets could possibly look like. If we've seen so many developments of similar characteristics here on Earth, it's not that unlikely that we would find similar characteristics of aliens on planets with similar environments to our own. So thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped clear up anybody's misconceptions of convergent evolution. I'll probably be making a documentary on raccoons and their intelligence pretty soon here, so stay tuned.